What's up anglers? Tyler O'Connor, Simplistic Fishing. I want to thank you for purchasing the Simplistic Fishing SD card and digital files from Simplistic Fishing. It is truly an honor to be part of the fishing community and I look forward to breaking down many, many more lakes for you guys. This video I really wanted to put together to show you guys how to use all of these files that I'm sending you. So the .kml file is a Google Earth file, so I'm going to walk you through uh, how to download and install Google Earth on your desktop and your phone and how to import that file in. And then I'm going to switch over and we're just going to talk about importing these other files that I've sent you. If you're a digital file guy, I've sent you just different types of file types. So I'll talk to you about those. And if you're an SD card guy, I'm going to walk you through just putting that card in your graph and the import process, the steps that you're going to need to take to be successful there. So before we go any further, if you don't want to watch any more videos and maybe you just have questions for me or something like that, you can always email me at simplisticfishing at outlook.com. Be more than happy to help you guys. Let's go ahead and jump over to the desktop and let's talk about downloading Google Earth Pro. So as I mentioned, in order to use the KML file, you need to download Google Earth Pro on your desktop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to walk you through this. You're just going to go out to your web browser. You're going to type in Google Earth Pro download. Okay, so Google Earth Pro download. Once you do that, the very first thing that's going to pop up is right here. Download Google Earth Pro for PC or Mac. Uh, you can do this one. So you just click here. This will bring you to the next page for Google Earth. And all you're going to do is agree to do this download. So you're going to agree. And it's actually going to download it right here. It's it's downloading uh, Google Earth Pro for you. Uh, you can see it down there on the on the download thing. If it does not download there, what you can do is you can go over here to Earth versions, and then from Earth versions, you're going to scroll down, or you can actually click it right here, Google Earth Pro on the desktop, which will you could have scrolled down to. That'll take you to here, and then you just want to click Download Earth Pro on the desktop. You're going to accept that. It's going to start to do the download again. It's basically the same exact thing. Um, so anyways, if it doesn't start the download, just go to Earth versions and then click on the Google Earth for the desktop. So once that happens, you're going to install that file. I'm not going to walk you through the install of the file because I already have it on my PC. But once that happens, you'll install the file. And then now we're going to switch over and we're going to talk about what it looks like when you open it up. So hopefully you were able to run through the download and do the install process. So now that it's installed and you've double clicked on the icon, this is the first thing you're going to see when you open up Google Earth Pro. So now you're not going to see this My Places. You'll just have a regular My Places with nothing in it. So what you need to do is you need to go out to the email that I sent you. So I'm going to switch over here to my Outlook. And for example, this is an email that I sent. You're going to download that file. So let's say that we want to download Granberry. So we're going to download Granberry. Actually, that's we're not going to do that one. Let's do Ray Roberts. So we'll download Ray Roberts. I'm going to put this to my downloads file. Keep it as the KML. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to close the email out. But then I'm going to go over here to Google Earth. And I'm going to go up here to File. I'm going to click Open. And then I will click on my download folder if it's not already selected. And then here you can see the KML file. If you don't see the KML file here, it's because you've changed this over here to something different. Make sure it's at the very first one where it says KML. You're going to select the Ray Roberts file, open it up. And then here it'll start zooming in and you'll see the entire file. So right here we can see we've got the entire Ray Roberts lake breakdown file. Uh, that I've sent you guys. And if you click on this little arrow here, it's going to break it down for you and really show you the breakouts. So let's say that you only wanted to see the offshore stuff. You could just click on just the offshore box, and that's only going to show you the offshore hotspots that we've marked on Ray Roberts. And you know, you could do this for ramps, whatever you want to do. You just basically select what you want to look at, uh, and there it has it all for you. So if you just wanted to look at different creek channels and ditches, Boom, there's all your creek channels and ditches that are out there. So real easy to use that. And while we're here, when we're talking about Google Earth Pro on the desktop, the reason why I really like the desktop versus the mobile app is the depth desktop allows you to draw the dates back and forth. So you'll look up here at the top where my arrow is, and you'll see that it says show historical imagery. You want to click that. And when you do that, it's going to bring up this bar that's up here. And if you want to draw the water back to see where things are at, you can use these two arrows, left or right, 
to be able to draw the water back to a time when the lake was down. So let's let's go in here to let's say to that creek channel right here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to keep drawing the water back until we find a good year when the water was really low. And once we find that, then that's when we can really start uncovering stuff. So there you go. So on this for this example it would be September of 2015. You can see the lake was really really low. Lots of good stuff to fish back in there. All kinds of good stuff, you know, throughout this lake. So that is how you use Google Earth Pro on the desktop. Let's switch over. Let's talk about the mobile app. Let's jump over and talk to you about installing this on your phone. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the App Store. So we're going to go to the App Store and we're going to look for Google Earth Pro. Earth Pro. Then we're going to click that. And then it's usually the second one down, so you'll see it right here. Now you're going to need to install that if you don't have it installed already. And then once you have it installed, of course, you can open it up. If you open it up, there's it's really just going to be blank. There's not going to be anything in there. I haven't found a good way to import projects into my phone very easily. Now there is a way to do it, but it's very complicated. So I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way to do this. So you've got Google Earth installed. That's the most important part. We're going to switch over here and we're going to go over to my email. So let's just go over to the email that I sent you. And when we do that, you're going to see that KML file in that email. You're going to click the KML file. It's just going to bring up a white screen. You're going to think this guy sent me a bunch of junk, but I didn't see any junk. I promise you, if you click on the little up arrow in the upper right hand side, click that and then click share file via. Then if you'll notice down here on the very bottom, we've got Google Earth. So we can click on Google Earth here, and that is going to bring in all of those waypoints. Now you have it on your phone. It's beautiful. You can zoom in, see where everything's at that we have marked. You can tell there's some debris there. There's some laydowns. There's a creek channel back there. All that good stuff is right there on your phone. So now we've talked about the phone. We've talked about the desktop. Let's switch over and talk about actually importing these files into your graphs. So before I jump in too much further, real quick for you guys that purchase the digital files, here's the email that I would have sent you, something similar to that. You're going to take your SD card, put it into your SD card reader in your computer. Once you do that, it's going to pop up the window to be able to copy to that. And you're just going to take these files, let's say this Hubbard Creek one, we're going to save as, and we're going to save it to the actual uh, SD card itself. So just save the GPX and the USR. You want to save those if you're a Lawrence user. If you're a Garmin user, you'll save just the GPX file. And if you are a Hummingbird user, you're going to save the GPX file and the matrix folder that I put out there for you. The matrix folder will actually be a zipped folder. So you're going to need to unzip the folder first, then copy the matrix folder and all of its contents to your card, as well as the GPX file. And that's for the Solix units. If you're Helix, you don't need the GPX file, but I'm trying not to confuse you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over and let's talk about importing these in to our graphs. Here we are on the last step. So now the first thing that I wanna point out is make sure that you save all your existing waypoints and tracks. I've never had anything be corrupt from importing in the waypoints, but it's always safe to definitely take care of that before you do anything moving forward. So if you are a Hummingbird Solix user, there's not too many of them out there, if you are a Solix user, as I mentioned, you're going to import the .gpx file. So you can see right here, these are just the steps that are going to walk you through that. You're going to install the SD card. So basically, you just put it in the, uh, the front of the control panel there. There should be, usually there's two SD ports there. You can just plug it into one of those SD ports, one of them that's open, or take out one of the ones that you have in there and plug this one in there. Then you're going to go press the home key. You're going to select files the files tool, I guess I should say. And then under import, you're gonna select nav data. And then when you do that, you're gonna see the name of the lake with .gpx uh, behind it, which is the file name. So just select that file name, import it, and you're good to go on the Solix units. Now let's move over and let's talk about the Hummingbird Helix units because they're a little bit different. On the Helix units, they're actually really, really easy. You're gonna take the card, find an open slot, take the card, put it in, and once you do that, it's going to prompt you. The first thing it typically says on mine is to ask me if I want to encrypt the card. 
And then I say yes or no. And then after that, it says, do you want to import in all the waypoints? And I say yes. And then they say they're imported successfully. Now, I do want to say before we move on to the, uh, the next graphs, once you import these waypoints in, you can take that card out. It's not like the mapping stuff where you have to keep the card in. So it's a one-time import and they're there. You can delete them and import them back in anytime you want as long as you have the SD card. So let's go ahead and move forward. Let's talk about Garmin graphs. Garmin's probably the easiest ones that are out there other than the uh, the Hummingbird's easy on the import process. It's just not easy creating the files for you. Uh, but on Garmin, all you have to do is insert the memory card into the slot, select nav info, then go to manage data, then data transfer, and then file type. And again, you're gonna see the name of the lake with .gpx. The .gpx file is the file that you'll wanna import and then just import it in and you're on your way. Again, you don't have to leave the card in the graph. And then the last ones that we have are Lorance units. Uh, Lorance, what you need to do is you need to go to your home screen by pressing the pages key. And then you're gonna look on the left-hand side, you're gonna see storage. You should see the card in there after you put the card in there. And then once you do that, you'll open that up. You're going to have a couple different files that are going to be in there. And there's a reason for this. Uh, Lorance units are all over the place on the file types that they like. So if it's a newer Lorance unit, usually you can just import the .gpx, just like we've been talking about for the other graphs. Just find the lake name .gpx, and that's the file that you want. If that does not work, usually you'll have two other files in there, maybe just one but you'll always have a .usr. So definitely try the .usr. If you have two .usrs on the file, you can try both of those. You only need to import one of the three. So once you get one to work, you're good to go. 90% of the time, the .gpx file is going to work for you. If you're a little bit older, say five years older on your lower inch units, the .usr is always going to be the way to go. So if you have any problems, or anything when you're importing this in, please feel free to send me an email, simplisticfishing at outlook.com. I really appreciate the business and want to thank you and say tight lines.